G'day everyone. Today I am here with someone very special and I thought this was a perfect time considering mm. a lot about what is happening in our world today. And um, I thought long and hard about the, um, the title for our little chat today. And I came up, it was going to be about joking, and then I thought, no, <laughs> have we lost our sense of humour? Yeah. I think it's yeah. a big question. So I'll introduce, this is Fiona McGarry. Fiona McGarry is a comedian. Mm. Hello. And uh, she's been a comedian for over 22 years. Yeah. And I was reading some amazing stats. I obviously Googled her. And um, well, I do know Fiona, it wasn't random. <laughs> um, so she's been a comedian for over 22 years. Impressive, over 3,200 shows. That's a lot. Do you have a little, well, I'm tired. do you keep a little number tucker thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, there's yeah. another one. That's one. Um, and that equates to an audience of over a quarter of a million people. A that's, lot, That's yeah. really impressive. I know, it's kind of, you forget that it is that many and then people go, wow, that's a lot. And I go, yeah, I suppose it is. It is a lot. But yeah, when you, yeah. When you think, oh, you're doing that every week for that yeah. long, yeah. for so many people. I've got so many questions. Now, normally I don't have a heap of questions, but I have so many questions <laughs> because there's just so many things. And I, I don't know if people look at comedians the same way, but, you know, did you wake up one day and go, geez, I'm funny? Or, you know, have you always mm. been a funny little kid? I was going to use another word there, but... <laughs> <laughs> it really varies. So I, um, I started what's considered late for comedy yeah. is 29. Yeah. People either start very young, or they did, mm. like around about 18, 19. Like they go straight high school into it. Yeah. Or sort of about that late 30. Then the next phase that happens, the midlife crisis, at about 45, 50. Well, yes. But that's yeah. generally just a bucket list kind of thing. Yeah. So, no, I just had a million jobs. I'd had so many jobs. And yeah. travelled and, you know, it was just gypsy-like and loved adventure. and. So what made you think you could cut it as a comedian? I, I literally just looked, um, I used to work at Dracula's. Oh, in the early days? Like, yeah, yeah, way, way back yes. at, the, at the big old thing. Yes. And, you know, at Drax you're expected to be funny. Yeah. But you're also working really hard. I thought you meant physically. to be scary. No, you are kind of meant to be funny when I was there. Maybe it's changed. Okay. And, um, all right. And I, they, you know, my section all laughed a lot and I... And literally, this is what made me want to do it. I was putting up the chairs at the end of the night. Yeah. And for a waitress hospitality job, that is, you'll never work harder than that place. Yeah. Because it's so busy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm putting up 400 chairs. Okay, this is not on my own. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember looking at stage and I thought, that's got to be easier than this. Yeah. That was my thought. Yeah. And then I, there was a comedy contest, but it just nagged at me. I just knew I wanted to try it. And I thought... I, if I don't try it, I'll regret it. Mm. Tried it, loved it, it worked. Mm. I think if that first gig didn't work, I don't know if I would have returned. Mm. But it worked. And I vividly remember telling the first joke. And for the first time in my life, I went, I found exactly what I meant to do. <laughs> Must be a great feeling. It was the best. It was yeah. the best. Because like I felt like I'd had a million jobs. Yeah. And just went, mm. felt like that's where you belong. Yeah. I was like, oh, finally. Yeah. Sometimes it takes people a long time to find that, doesn't it? The thing that, that brings you joy. Yeah. And, um, you know, and humour, I suppose, mm. is one of those things that we need to have in our life. And, you know, the last one thing the last few years has taught us is that I think we need to mm. retain our sense of humour oh. just to get through it. So the question is, do you think we've lost our sense of humour? I, I really do. It concerns me to the level of concern. At yeah. The minute, yeah. I think the last couple of years we've lost it immensely, obviously. Yeah. But even before, I could see it creeping in. Because mm. Australians, we're known as you know the larrikin kind of country, aren't we? You know, we're easy yeah. going. We have a laugh at ourselves. You know, we think we're we yeah. think we're funny. We think we say funny shit to ourselves yeah, all the time. <laughs> well, we do. But um, we've we've gone um, the you know that it's just always hard to say cancel culture. Yeah really has done immense damage. A politically correct all the time. Yeah. You can't say that. You can't the, say the that. The woke world has woken up and decided, yeah. right, we're not allowed to have humour anymore. How does that translate, <laughs> though, as a comedian on stage? Frustratingly. And how bloody... <laughs> yeah, I mean, how bloody careful. I would... Because I've always thought, too, recently, 
one of the most difficult gigs would be radio because because radio is live or I yeah. might have a small delay. But, you know, I, I started in radio. That was yeah. where I, I began in my career. Yeah. And, you know, you could say anything. You could, mm. you know, you oh, could man. have a dig at anyone. Yeah. You know, and everyone saw it as, you know, it was funny. It was just comedy. Mm. We're just joking. But now you can't say so no. many things. It's gone. And I, I reckon we do this with lots of things, not just humour. There's a problem. Mm. And then we say, right, we have to shut it down and stop everything. Mm. I.e., little Johnny falls off the swing, breaks his arm, mm. the parent sues the council. Yeah. Okay, the council's reaction, let's close all of the playgrounds. Right. Shut, yeah. We can't have any more playgrounds. That's right. And the same thing's kind of happening yeah. with the council culture. Yeah. Oh, they said that, they said that. Someone gets up and it just gets completely blown out of proportion. Mm. So has that changed the face of comedy, do you think? It, it, it has. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has. Um, but what the audience fails to understand is, one, most comics are not up there to cause harm. No. Or, they're no, trying no, to no, make a laugh. Right. Yeah, right? yeah. They're trying to make a joke. They're trying to bring lightness to what may be a heavy situation. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we just don't get it right. Like, mm. not everyone... I don't think everyone else does their job perfectly all the time. No. But no, apparently we we're not allowed to have a bad day. Right? <laughs> we're not allowed to have a bad day. Yeah. But it... It is very concerning for me that the level of this woke culture coming in, yeah. saying what you can and can't say and this and that. Mm. And my question is, how come no one's questioning, why am I so easily offended? Yes. Like, how about you look there yeah. and leave us alone? Yeah, yeah. Because most of the time, with of course there's exceptions, mm. the intention of comics is to create laughter. Absolutely. We just miss the mark. Or you hear it through your filter. Mm. And this is the part that people are not getting. We've just gone to everything's offensive. Yes. Don't offend well, anyone. You're not allowed given, to offend anyone we've anymore. We've given people permission to be offended about anything. You know, and you, everything. Yeah. If you have a different opinion, you're offended. Mm. You know, you're not allowed to... Well, you're not allowed to have a different opinion than everyone else. Otherwise, you're seen as a rebel yeah. or, you know... Trump conspiracy oh, theories, yes. probably. Yeah. It's not like that of them. There we go. But Can't no, we, we need we need to, uh, I, you know, I think if people focused a lot more on humour and going, hang mm. on, laughter is medicine. Mm. There's, there's no, I don't think there's a mistake. I think it's a very specific thing that humans have. Absolutely. A sense of humour. Yeah. And to be honest, from day dot, mm. you're told not to use it. You hit the school system. Stop laughing. Stop mucking around. Get serious. Well, that's get right. serious. Because anyone so. who's got little kids will know. Like the funniest thing with little kids, and I know with my kids, is always you know fart jokes and funny jokes. When you're a little kid, like they come out with the Hilarious. most absurd, ridiculous because they observe life and they think it's hilarious, mm. but they'll actually say it without any filter, right? Yeah. And as soon as yeah, they get to the school system or you grow up, you think, oh, that's not appropriate. Yeah. I can't say that. I can't do that. But, you know, let's face it, fart jokes are still funny. Yes, <laughs> because they are. They're funny. <laughs> the body makes funny noises. That's funny. Yeah. What's wrong with But uh, Yeah, you know, so that conditioning starts quite early. Mm. Of be serious, not allowed to laugh at that, not mm. allowed to laugh, not allowed to laugh. It's like, hang on a second. Mm. Why are we not? Who said? And when you start to look at that, you know, people, for people to make that inquiry for themselves into their own yes. humour of, why can't I laugh at that? Well, because some oh someone told me not to. Yeah. Well, who? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, Miss Russell in grade seven. Well, yeah, actually, it when I look back at her, she was not very pleasant. <laughs> she wasn't very funny. Why am I following her rules? <laughs> Still, no, exactly. Yeah. No, People high priority. priority. Way too serious. Is all right. So, a question with um, men and women, mm. and uh, is there one who's funnier than the other? Mm. We'll just stick with men and women. Mm. Well, we won't go into that whole subject, but you know. Are men or women more serious or more funny one than the other? Or do one does one side Look, need more cheering up than the other? I, I suppose, you know, obviously the world that I mince around in, no, mm. because I work with heaps of females. But I, I think, again, I think there's a fair bit of conditioning that's happened here. Yeah. That even if you just look back at radio and television, it was always the guys that got the funny role. Well, that was a, yeah. yeah. Is it a man's and now, role? Well, world, do you think? Yes. So, well, here's a good example. 22 years, I'd say for the first at least five, I was the only female comedian working in Brisbane on the Gold Coast. 
Wow. Um, Katrina Davidson was around, Sally Kimpton was around, but the others lived in Melbourne, yeah. so there was none. Yeah. I was the only one. Now, heaps of us. Okay, that's good. I've run the comedy course for 12 years, and I think probably the first six I didn't see a female. Wow. I now see quite a few. So the last six years, there's been a significant difference in more okay. females coming through. As a general humour, you know, how does the brain yeah. perceive humour? You know, we, we, women, in my experience, we have a propensity to be a little bit more emotional. Yeah. And I think we're a bit more serious because we, we take on the weight of the world. We're raising family. We're looking Don't after so parents. We're, a million people you know, we're taking care cooking, of. Cooking, different... shopping, mm. cleaning, taking the kids to school. We're doing all these things that we haven't got time. You Busyness know, takes funny. away humour. Yes. Really quickly. So yeah. I, I think the fact that, you know, and again, it's, it's very general, um, but the when we've got <clears throat> quite a lot of emotion happening, it can be sometimes a bit hard to find the humour. We've got to put the pause on yeah. it. I'd encourage, you know, more women to get into that space. But as I said, I think there's just so much conditioning. Yes. That's come in there. The fact that I have so many more females now just blows me away. Yeah, that's But fantastic. even if you look on television and radio, mm. you start to see more now. Yeah. Oh, we... oh the ladies are funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, heaps of us do. Yeah. Yeah. I think we get funnier as we get older because I think we get to a point where we just don't care what other people think anymore. And oh, it's so great. <laughs> That's what my sister and I were having a laugh about. She's just been up here. And she says, you really don't care that much, do you? And I go, no, no. You know, I'll go and speak. She's like, can you put shoes on? I go, no. Mm. <laughs> She's like, I would never. And I go, not I, conform. I know, I know you were. I know. But it's, uh, yeah, you've got to, the, the, one of the main things that happens is people mistake I'm not funny mm. with their ability to sense funny and see funny. Right. And that's where they need to, I think, prioritise. Mm. Going, hang on, I'm looking at the world like everything's a big problem. Everything's yeah. very serious. Now, granted, lots, there's lots of problems. Mm. No doubt about that. For sure. But we can still actively go, I'm going to see some humour in this. Yes. With myself. I'm going to give myself a break. Yeah. You know? Give yourself permission to go and have a good time. I think a lot of people, in, in, you know, my job as, as a naturopath too, when it comes to health, you know, it's never just about treating symptoms of people, you know, and things that they've got wrong with them, whether it's pain or it's, you know, a bit of excess weight or whatever it is. One of the questions I always ask is, where do you find joy in your life? What brings you joy? When's the last time you had a laugh? When's the last time, you know, you just let your walls down and, and you know, found some pleasure in yourself, something that makes you smile and you know, mm. puts a smile on your dial. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people forget that. And it's a really difficult thing for people to ask. So, yeah, it's a choice too. Yeah. I think, um, you know, a positive mindset is important. Yes. I'm not an advocate of just saying to someone, you need to change your mindset, you need to be positive. Because no. there's lots of other depth like, and layers. It's like going to you and saying, tell me a joke. Yeah. You or, just, or, <laughs> just doesn't or, work. Oh, I don't feel great. Here's a Band-Aid, you mm. know. But... In combination with other things so I think a combination with a humor mindset mm. of is there any possibility for me to see this a different way yes. other than upset or anger or yes. whatever but also we certainly need a permission piece mm. we've been again conditioned you, mm. you can't laugh at this you can't laugh mm. at that well who said mm. who said while I'm grieving I'm not allowed to laugh yeah that's right Maybe I need to laugh while I'm grieving. Not yeah. always. No, no. Just five minutes. Mm. You know? But we think, no, oh, no, I'm grieving. I couldn't laugh. Well, the, the two can exist. I've got a story about that, mm. which is really interesting. When um, I was married in a long, long time ago, <laughs> yes. in a planet far away, yes. um, well, my husband at the time, his father passed away, and we'd just had our first son. And yes. he was probably about 10 or 11 months old. And of course, I took him to the funeral, so in, in the church where everything's, you know, very somber, very quiet. And of course it's sad. Of course funerals are sad. Yeah. But our little boy, James, <laughs> was, <laughs> not that I'll name anyone, you know, James was sort of propped up on the pew between Excellent. us, right? And he was facing all the people in the church, yeah. right? We, of course, we're right up the front. So all he faces. was right at the beginning. And of course, he was the funniest little kid. He had these blonde curly hair, big blue eyes. 
and this big cheeky grin and he was just laughing his head off at everybody and after the funeral which was quite and this kept going and i thought well i can't stop him he is what he you know he's going to do what he what he does he's a little kid he doesn't understand but for him it was like wow look at all these people i can smile i can talk to and afterwards as everyone was coming out of the church and obviously he was in my arms everyone said that was the best thing to have your son there so and, and to remind us that this is the circle of life and there is still joy and, yeah. and laughter yes. and all good things in the world even while we're going through that process so, so that's yeah. so important like yeah. i think if we could um really understand the importance of that mm. it would also then allow other emotions yes you know we're we're so hell-bent on oh are you okay you know oh, i've got to fix mm. you it's like let's mm. let's create space for all of it mm. you know people's grief is can be acceptable absolutely people's anger can be acceptable of because course. everything should be acceptable because it's your feeling of course and we you know we're so sort of still a bit old schooly with emotions of oh no but thinking mm. yeah. they all exist together yes they have to yeah because yeah. they do yeah. but if we have this humor part Mm. It's our it's our stress relief relief, yeah. you know. And from a health perspective, that's oh. really important. And um, Fiona recently um, came along to a ladies' lunch that we had with our <laughs> with our work, and there was a, a room of menopausal women, which was really interesting. Now, I think menopausal women are great. Yeah. I mean, yes, we we are going through some shit. I'm getting hot and, now. <laughs> yeah, I might be a bit yeah. overdressed. Woo and uh, <laughs> lucky it's winter. <laughs> and I think. What was so wonderful about that was the women in the room, you know, we all have <clears throat> different symptoms of menopause and going through our own stuff, but everyone could find the humour and there was nothing that was, you know, off the table. Like everything was on the table. Absolutely. You say what you like, insult anything, any... Like it's a... Yeah. You've got to you've got to be able to have a laugh Hot at these... Hot sweats are like farts. It's a crazy. natural process. <laughs> I know. You have to laugh at that process. Yeah. Like I... And everyone loved it. We came away from that. Everyone had had a good laugh. Everyone had just was like, Phew, "Okay, I can let that and the go." The chemicals. I can now get on with my life. That's right. Well, because it feel it re good chemicals. releases endorphins. So Oxytocin. there is oxytocin. Yes, there like, is a chemical literal reaction that actually happens from laughing. We have laughing. a free chemist dispenser. Yes. In us. Yeah. Of absolutely. Laughter. That's why I'm like, but it's amazing how many people are under that belief that you you can't possibly laugh while you're grieving or you can't mm. you know i i remember getting in trouble at the hospital when dad was in palliative care we got told to pipe it down be quiet oh really we're like oh sorry we're just having a laugh so that mm. we could survive i remember there was that famous doctor who made everybody laugh Pat Chatham, yeah, yeah. Pat Chatham. my Pat dad was a funny dude yeah and um he was supposed to you know according to the doctors he would have passed away in 12, 24 hours but it was 10 days Oh, wow. And so we were just by day ten, we're like, oh, come you know, on, Dad, tired. For, oh yeah, and I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> come on, mate. Oh, see, that's true. I feel bad for laughing at that. See, see isn't that exactly true? because we're conditioned mm. that but, I can't. Yes, but my but, emotion was, my reaction was to laugh, and then I pulled it back in my head. It's like, oh, but it's your dad passing away. Yeah, but he would have. That's what he would have wanted. Mm. And my sister said. Flanner, if you weren't here, I don't think I could have kept going. Mm. Like it was the little release of the laughter. Yes. The stress, and that's what it is. I, yeah. I think our sense of humour is just this beautiful safety net that yes. can just grab you and hold you and it's warm yeah. and, and and give you a bit of great, good-feeling chemicals mm. so that you can keep mm. going with this stressful situation. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we don't think it's okay. It's like, no, it, that's yeah. what it's for. We're sort of living through that at the moment with my father, who's 90, he's got heart failure, and he's lived oh, way yeah. beyond what the doctors have said, right? Yeah. And he's had some really low times where I've sat with him and thought, okay, you're on your way out, Dad, and, you know, we sit there and we, he prays and yeah. that's fine, whatever. And uh, and then, you know, I go through all those grieving emotions where he's leaving and, yeah. and going. Um, he's quite at peace with it, but obviously, you know, there's emotion for all of us yeah. around him. And then he just makes these, he keeps making these remarkable recoveries. And I just said, Dad, you're killing me. Yes. Like, <laughs> I know. I know. But no, you do yeah. you laugh at it because, man, like this guy to. just has this formidable force that just keeps him going. And he's going, Dad, I can't take this anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my dad's exit is the funniest. 
and like so perfect for him. Like yes. it was perfect. He took ten days yes. because he was late for everything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was just. Yeah. Um, but the the humor piece for that is essential, and even mm. you know other friends because mm. I've got friends now at the same age. You know, parents are late eighties, yes. nineties. They're all dropping. Yes. And the same, I kind of ring, just like, I need some relief. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, because it's hard work. Because you feel bad and, you know, am I by the bedside enough? Yes. And this and that. Yeah. And it's like, hey. Yeah. Or the guilt and. Yeah. I mean, you can. All that comes up. Yeah. Oh, who do I? Oh, what do I? Oh, there's so many have, questions. You'll have to watch your questions because I, I get I them awful on and. No, I know. I'll take oh, that's in a right. different direction, a little do people, al alphabet. Oh, here's a question. Do people have an expectation, because we're talking about this, but do people have an expectation of you to always be funny? Yeah, lots of people do. So even in your private yeah. life, if you were having a dinner party, is there a pressure on you to, you know, keep the crowd going and to keep the buzz Good. Going? Like really close friends would mm. not mm. say um, meeting friends of cl close friends. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so people obviously, which I get, they hear the title comedian, they yes. think you're funny. And I go, well, I am when I do my job. Yes. When I'm not doing my job, yeah. I just want to be human, Fiona. But part of it's, you know, almost a bit your own fault when you start because you're mm. trying to sort of always find material. But yeah. the truth is, I, I think I was funny socially, more funny socially before I started comedy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd say I've held. I say I hold back more now, oh, okay. for that reason that people. I know actually, early, in the early days, someone said something to me like, "Oh, you, you're not at work now, or you're turning it on." I was like, "Oh, mm. no, actually, no, I'm just being me." Yeah. <laughs> and I remembered it, and I vividly like sort of, oh, yeah, pulled back a bit. Um, but you know, I'm a bit introverty anyway. But yes, they, they certainly do. do you to the point that they actually say. Oh, you're a comedian. You don't seem that funny. Oh, people actually tell you. Really? Yeah, it's hilarious. It's funny. I know it is. Do you use them for material? Is that where you get sometimes? Some well, I say to them, I'm not working. Yeah, yeah. You're not paying me. What's your job? <laughs> what are you doing? You're not doing your job. Oh, but they can't. You know, they they can't separate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's your work. Yeah. But you, you know, also when you do start comedy. Mm. You know, my ego is so out trying to ask, scream it from the mountaintops. I'm a comedian, I'm a comedian, but mm. you don't. As the ball no. goes by, you're like, oh yeah, whatever. Oh, maybe best that I say that. Yeah. yeah. I often got to the point of just saying I was a writer or something. Mm. So now... Because I, I would visually see people and feel people change upon me saying, I do this. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's different when... Yeah, I suppose it's if weird. you say what your profession is, oh, you're an accountant or you're a teacher or whatever, people go, oh yeah, okay, that's cool, whatever. That's a good job. But when someone says... Oh, I'm a comedian. You sort of go, oh, what do I say now? What do I yeah. have? To, like, oh, how? how and I feel people get self-conscious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Which I'm like, oh, I don't. No, no, come back and connect. So you're not just a comedian that gets up and does gigs. You've found another sort of, I suppose, a bit of a niche way to connect with people now, where you are running classes on helping mm. people to find their inner comedian, or mm. to use it to heal and to grow. Mm. And, and to be a more wholesome person. Yeah. What, what it didn't made you start come up yeah, with this? It sort of didn't start there. Uh, so the comedy course is 12 years old and I put it together, not because I thought I want to teach people, because I was like, I, I realized in order to make decent income, I'm gonna to have to be on the road a lot. Mm. And I went, I'm getting older. Mm. I don't, oh, this is gonna work for me. Yeah. So a friend of mine um, named Nolan, great comic in, um, great comic, uh, Northern New South Wales mm. uh, said, Why don't you run a comedy course? You used to do a bit of training, didn't you? I said, Yeah. So I popped it on together and I loved it. Mm. Like, I loved it surprisingly. Mm. I was like, Oh. Um, because what they got out of it. Like, mm. I just watch people expand. Why are people doing it? For every million different reasons. Because it's not something I'd think of and go, Oh, I'll go and do a comedy course. Um, and I, I'm public speaker. Mm. Keynote speakers, bucket list, um, I want more confidence. Well, that's one of the greatest fears, isn't it, to get up in public and speak? Yeah, so people think, I've, you know, I get terrified of public speaking and they come to me and I'm like, you do know that this is even more next level than public speaking. And yeah. So yeah, uh, a, a lot of different reasons. Lots of people come into it, you know, thinking, oh, I'll just try it once, but they really do want to do it. 
okay. for a job. You know, oh, really? Be, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But then I tell them about the job. <laughs> I say, you don't make money straight away. It's not how it works. No. You know, same as musicians. Yes. A lot of practicing. Yes. A lot of practicing yes. chords. And yeah. the first time you hop on stage, same as practicing chords. Mm. Um, I've completely forgot what you asked me. That's right. We're talking about why people do it. Why oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really mixed. Mm. It's really mixed. More men than women or women than men? What do you find? Balancing out a bit now, but it's still more men. And yeah. age demographic? There is, this is, I think why I love doing the course. Mm. It's because there's no, there's no common No limitations ever. on anything. I've had um, 78 is my oldest. Through. That's awesome. So awesome. Uh, I've had quite a few in the 70s. Mm. Yeah, I haven't had an 80 yet, but I What are they like. thinking? Just, oh, I always wanted to try that. Why not? Yeah. Just still living life, doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Just awesome. Love it. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, I want to try this once, you know. Yeah. So yeah. because there's so much comedy everywhere now, stand-up people yeah. are like, I wouldn't mind doing it. Like, yeah, I could do that. Or, <laughs> to be honest, like I did. Like, I used to watch people on telly and go, that's not even funny. I'm funny, isn't it? Mm. And then I tried it and went, actually, this is really hard. <laughs> it's a hard gig. It's not an easy gig. I do think about that. I see comedians up on stage and go... <laughs> Oh my lord! How do you keep doing this? You know, if it's a fifteen minutes or something on stage, yeah. that is a long time. Well, you're doing a keep... million things. Yeah, yeah. There's a million things to get it right. Um, I just realised where we were with the first question about courses. Um, <laughs> so people do that course, yeah, mainly for confidence. They mm. think they want to get the skill. Um, what do you get out of it? To watch people successfully do something they really are so terrified in doing mm. and I watch them go from their belief in themselves mm. I watch that expand and that just brings joy to my heart because I can see it in their heart and I think what then it would teach people too, like in a parallel to what I do with health is about teaching people what they can do for themselves because then mm. it starts to expand into other yeah. areas of their life they think well if exactly. I can do that then exactly. oh I can do this or exactly. I can do that it, it stops that limiting yeah. belief about themselves doesn't it and I get I get people contact me after going I just studied law I just got my law degree and you made that happen I'm like wow. what how did I make that happen and it's because yeah I had the confidence yeah so yeah that that is probably the main one I reckon is mm. is a confidence kind of thing mm. and then I another body of work was created from that because people were telling me that you know people were that was the other thing i noticed a lot of people coming in massive increase in mental health issues yeah massive increase in the last five years yes and people were coming to sort of hope it might help with a bit of depression and yeah for sure they were saying it did help or you know i suffer anxiety i'm like mm. okay great this could make it worse this <laughs> no. you do know that yep all right um, which I'm fine with, but then, you know, I'm just then kind of going, okay, I'm going to have heaps of work to do this course, right? Mm. Um, but they do that one thing mm. that's kind of like the most scary and then they're like, well, mm. it, it sort of drops it down and mm. they were giving feedback that it was helping. Mm. That's great. The With the mental health. So the actively seeking humour and trying to find more lightheartedness, um, obviously was helping them and I thought it was interesting. Mm. And then I just started looking at, well, let's have a look at this human, like what else could we do with this? Yeah. And how can I take what I know and even humor, like there's been, there's been times where humors, I would say probably saved my life, like mm. literally, you know, eight years back, very depressed, mm. a lot of external factors that added to that, mm. dealing with, you know, childhood issues, going through that process, my humour, you know, when mm. you're healing mm. deep, deep wounds, you know. Because life isn't always funny. Life is not you always know, funny. And or, even comedians right? have their low times. So, you know, using humour to move through it and find yeah. your way back to where yes. you need to be. Yeah. Or to keep going with those yes. really deep in healing those tough curves. Times. When, you're, when you're in, you know, if you're dealing with childhood issues, or sexual abuse, or whatever it be, yes, to go back into that a lot of pretty bloody hard, yeah. And we, yeah, so I, you know, I use that again as just that stress release valve with the humor. So the yeah. new workshop is getting people 
to understand mm -hmm. your sense of humour is your seventh sense. Yeah. It is an absolute priority. Mm -hmm. It is very easy for you to get it strong, healthy and robust. Mm -hmm. It's the same as going to gym. And it literally yeah. is. Yeah. Like if you can actively choose, wow, my sense of humour has disappeared. Because mm. it does, it just disappears mm. sometimes. Last, mm. definitely, even over the last two years, mine just. Yeah, I was trying to write a book on humour and I'm like, I've got said, nothing. It's really easy the last two years to lose your sense of humour and to yeah. lose your place in the world. And, and you know, you ha do have to make, I think, con conscious choices even now. And, and I'm very I aware do. of that. Yeah. Making conscious choice to either. You can, you know, watch some stuff on social media and become very depressed and, you know, curl up in a ball in the corner. Yeah. Or you can choose the other path, which is to see, you know, all the it's wonderful nightmares. things in the world. Mm. But, you know, the world's still going, whether you've got family or mm. children or parents or whatever it is, again, yeah. that brings you joy. And we all have yeah. that choice to make. Yeah. Mm. So the, 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 new, the new workshops that I sort of do is, mm. is around that, is getting people to have a thorough inspection in their own sense of humour. It's like, okay, let's have a look. Where'd it come from? Okay, it came mm. from your friend, your best friend, you were seven. Is it still mm. appropriate? Mm. You know, because our, our sense yes, of humour is all about our subconscious. Yes. It is all about our belief systems. Yes. It is all about all of the baggage we're carrying around. Yeah. Um, and lots of that is what stops us mm. Seeing humour. Absolutely. I think sometimes you have to look at your inner child, don't you? And go, oh. what would my inner child say? I remember years ago, I think I'm funny, but you know, my kids will beg it to differ. But all right, <laughs> this was my We're other son, my other son in the car and his mate, and I had to take them to a rugby match in Brisbane. And we were driving on Coronation Drive, and anyone knows there's a big sign that says to Wong. And I go, oh, we're going to Wong. You remember, boys, two Wongs don't make a white. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was cracking myself up. And no, the two I've never boys heard that. There. I lived in Brisbane. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm sure other people have thought mm. of that too. But I just thought I was so funny. Mm. And we still laugh about it. I mean, they yeah. didn't laugh about it then. They just sort of looked at me. I think my son so was great. mortified and embarrassed. I don't know. Yeah. And then, But now they laugh about it and go, do you great. remember when you said I went, I'll never forget it. I yeah. thought I was so hot. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we're meant to laugh at ourselves. See stupid things. You're meant and... to laugh at yourself in a loving yes. way. You've got to get it right. I mean, there's yes. obviously the, um, you know, you've, you've got to learn the, the lines of the humour. If, yeah. you, if you're using humour as a deflection to not deal with your emotions, yes. it's problematic. Yeah. Okay. Um, but bringing them nicely matched together yes. is, um, yeah. healing's just so much easier. What with, happens with when you, side. do you... So when you're doing, say, one of your one of your gigs, or you're standing in front of people, and you can see that things maybe the humour you're using isn't quite. They don't like. You me. haven't read the room. They don't like me. Um, <laughs> do you have any moments like that? And then what happens? What do it's, you do? It's it's hard when you first start mm. because that's all part of the learning curve to not mm. let that bother you yes. and how to come back on stage when that's happened. Some and it does people, bother you. Some people just sit there. You can see them. Like, there's just nothing. Yeah. You know, they're giving you nothing. And I yeah. know that when I do public yeah. speaking about health yeah. and nutrition. And you see people and I go, am I getting through to you? Yeah. You know, do you, are home? you hearing me? Or Yeah. It's, it's when it first happens to you, it's like, ouch. <laughs> it is so <laughs> Take ouch. it personally. Oh, my God, you take it so personally. Um, and then you've got to be like, that's, that's the trick. Mm. That's the hard bit. Don't mm. take it personally. Yes. And you've got to learn, okay, what could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. Could I have done something yeah. differently? If you, if you just automatically go straight into a, oh, it's their fault, the audience is dumb. <laughs> you're not going to, you know, you might feel better about yourself, but you won't kind yeah. of get good. But yeah, when it first you happens, it, there is no greater silence <laughs> than, than a crowd, you delivering humour and the crowd going, nah. No, no, I don't like it. That no. silence is deafening. Can't say that from your perspective. <laughs> and yeah. But now you know when you learn your skill and ten years down the track, mm -hmm. you still want to do your job properly. But now it's sort of reversed where mm -hmm. I've got to laugh. I've yes. got to not laugh. Right. Because I'm looking at them and I'm like, what are you? You're <laughs> kind of like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I know this is. This is a really good bit. Do you find you go freestyle like that? Though? Oh, that's yeah, just, sometimes. that's an opportunity, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, sometimes I'll be like, what's happening? What are you doing? <laughs> um, and try and play with them. But, yes, mm. you've got to keep your own 
Mm. You've got to make sure you don't step into the arrogant stakes where you're just like, yeah. well, you know. Sounds like a tough I've said year. this many times and everybody else liked it and you don't. <laughs> you know, who wants to hear that? Sounds like a tough yeah. year. Would you recommend becoming a comedian? Mm. Yes and no. It really is a yes and no. Yeah. I would... The joy, like the amazement... I'm never not grateful that I got to the level I got to. Mm. To be able to walk onto a stage and create laughter and have the energy of that coming back in is freaking a god. Such a gift. Like it's just the greatest joy. And then you go, I'm very blessed to have this job. And people say, oh, your job's amazing. I'm like, I am blessed. But I did work really hard to get yeah. there. Like it's 10 years of working for love, really, yeah. for free. Bit quicker now with social media and different things, but it is, yeah, it's an amazing gift. Yeah, it's not a cop out. It's not a oh, okay, I'll just uh, this didn't work out, so I'll become a comedian. Yeah, it's you not... work real hard yeah. to make it to make it happen. So, yes, from that point of what an amazing job, mm. you know, that's. But what comes with that? Mm. That's the tricky bit, and that's why people don't follow through and can't keep doing it because yeah, when they don't like you. Mm. You have to walk off stage and go, it's okay. Put yourself back together and not yeah. cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> you are. Oh. So you've got to go, okay. I think that comes with other jobs too. <laughs> just, well, exactly. I think a like lot that. of people I spoke to. Did I do my best today? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. who was that? Oh, there was a woman actually in, uh, in the Airbnb recently told me she cried herself to sleep. I'm like, that's too much information. Yeah. I just want the key. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were checking in. Yes. Yeah, just, yeah oh. I'm just like, but she'd sort of made a bit of a joke. Oh, a bit of an overshare. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, just, just the key. Oh. Um, bless her. Uh, so, yeah, if you can if you can withstand the stuff that comes with it, it's mm. an amazing job. Mm. And to, you know, share laughter is amazing. It does come with Do you have a things. standout moment? Is there... Anything that really stands out to you to go, wow, that was probably the highlight of my career so far. Or is, I mean, yeah, I don't have up. one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was. It's been, it's been a few years. Yeah. Um, I think I've got a couple and they change. Mm. So the standout moment, you know, say 10 years ago would have been the first time I'm at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival yeah, performing wow. in front of, at the, you know, the, the gala. You're on telly. You know, those things... You know, or the first time I do Brecky Radio, or the first time I'm on yes. the Comedy Channel. You know, so, and then as my ego's got a bit more intact, mm. now the person that comes up to me, going, hugging me, saying, "I can't thank you enough. It's the first mm. time I've laughed in five years." Isn't that lovely? My dad died. Yeah. That's of way greater value to me. Yeah. yeah. But that wouldn't have been the case ten years ago. So they they all change. Mm. They, they all change. How do you think people can bring more humour into their life? What if there was a if there was one gift that you could impart on on people, you know, to say how they can improve that because it does improve your mental health, your sense of well being because of the release of chemical endorphins and makes us feel better. What is the one probably tip that you could give people to say how do we start to incorporate that more into our life? What what could they do? Um. I'd probably, you know, the, the first point of call for people, because you don't know where people are in their life, is just be active. Just like, you know what, let's get a group of friends together and we'll go to the comedy club. Mm. Let's get a group of friends together. We're going to, this week, you're going to watch, bring your favourite comedy movie. Yes. Next week, it'll be John's. Next mm. week, it'll be, you know, whoever. Just to yeah. be active about the things of, where do I, where is laughter for me? Yes. Because it's, and, and if the more people look at it like I need to go to humour gym mm. because I haven't laughed, I mean, that's the first question, have I laughed? Mm. No, okay, well, where did you normally? Mm. Well, okay, and you what know, used in, to make in the laugh, pandemic, yeah. case, those things may now have gone. Mm. It's all right, well, I need to find other things. What's the common denominator with that that you used to laugh at? All right, it was that. and Yeah, so just to be active and literally make a plan. Mm. Like I would set a month and say, for the next month, what am I going to do? Mm. I'm going to watch a movie once a week. Yes. I'm going to get some people, we'll go to the mm. comedy club. So you have to 
be active about it in yeah. a mindset. Switch off mainstream media. Get rid of it. Switch off. Your, your Never watch the news would be one. Yeah, yeah. Just don't do any of that and put on a, a yeah a good movie. Yeah. That's what I do. I like to put on a movie so yeah. I don't watch mainstream media because it's just a load of rubbish. Another one I would recommend, which I find very helpful myself, is I have what I call a humour hip flask on my phone. And it's just files, just different things that I find entertaining. Okay. And so if sometimes, you know, I might be like, oh, God, I'm really shitty to that. I might go through, I might have a quick look at my human hip flask. Yeah. And just, it, they're, they're things that just automatically make me laugh. Okay. So just automatically, I, it brings, yeah. they're things that I've seen that I'm connected to that I know will bring me joy. Mm. My neural pathways will literally go yeah. joy. So, yeah, it's if you don't being know active. active. YouTube has a lot, like there's some funny shit on there yeah like so you can much. you know you can find some funny stuff on there yeah so, you know baby stuff or babies sucking lemons you know parents giving their kids like there's so, so many good things on there it's so. be so be active about it would be number one yeah. and then my other absolute number two is meditate which i know when i tell people that people are like what's that got to do with humor oh, yes. and i'm like humor is very hard to see when you are very busy and frantic and overwhelmed right so in order to really start to see humor, you've got to be able to zoom out and have a look at your perspective. Slow down. Yeah, you've got to slow down. Okay. And there's so much, there's so much humor mm. in humanity. Mm. And we all just need yeah. to go, we're all, we're all bloody mad. Yeah. Like, you know. The world would be a much better place for yes, it, wouldn't it? Yes, you know, just like I love and embrace my inner idiot. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, you know what? I'm kooky. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes and I'm my like brain's that. this, my brain's wild. It's, my you kids know, have accepted that now. It's, they know I'm a bit of a yeah, nutter, so that's we, okay. Um, accept ourselves and, yeah. and others. So let's talk about there's other things that bring you joy. Yep. And we're sitting beneath one of them. Oh, <laughs> we are. So that is the first one I ever did. Is it? Yeah, so I've you... never, so many people want that and I'm like, you're not getting it. And when did you take up this, So, or why did you take up painting? I don't, I, I just always loved sort of, you know, even in my, Probably 20s actually. So mm -hmm. I was a sporty person mm -hmm. uh, as a kid. Not, I don't think by choice, but everyone else in the family just did sport and yeah. they're like, here's balls, go play netball. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I was really good. Yes. Oh, yeah, like nutty sports person. I okay. could have been state champion, Olympic, probably. Wow. Mm. Okay. But I didn't really care for it. But, yeah. um, so I'd always, you know, once I got out of the home nest, I'm like, hang on, I don't want to play sporty. I was like, oh, drawing. So I started traveling very young, started drawing and squiggling. And I'm like, oh, this color thing is kind of good, you know? Yeah. I love to color. And then, yeah, I just started, you know, having a play at painting one day. And I was like, oh, I really like that. Mm. I just get lost. I can get lost into color. Okay. And. And is this the kind of stuff that you're always. I'm always like? abstract. Yeah. yeah. But now I've also gone. I'm also. I like things finished quickly. Okay. Well, I have. That's been something I'm like, I'll get, you know, into it. And it's got to be finished now. Yeah. I don't want to have to come back to a painting the next day. Oh, okay. That, well, that was what I used to be like. Wow. And okay. now I'm like, okay, let's, oh, I see we need. So I'm just now with the art really going, actually, I, there's more things I can learn and looking at like the skill. Yes. And um, different types of, I suppose, brushwork and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like there's so much it. to experiment and play with. So mm. it's just, it's the playfulness of it, I think. Mm. But yeah. that one, I think, is my favourite because I stretched the canvas on my own. Oh, okay. So I made the frame the whole lot. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. But I love it, yeah. So I can, um, if I'm into something, mm. I could be lost for hours. Mm. It's something when I was a kid, I loved my favourite, like my pride and joy was my Derwent pencil set and everyone remembers you yeah. know the Derwent and I had the double yeah. one you know what? I'd fancy. get fancy I know nice. so posh so posh and um you know so I got posh. it for my birthday so all I wanted was Derwents oh. you know and those of us that remember that yeah. you know we know how important they yeah. were and it's funny I used to draw and paint and I loved it and I remember at the school I was at uh, Miami High School which is only down the road from yeah, where we are and they gave us a classroom to paint because we thought the walls were a bit boring. So a girlfriend and I, wow. they gave us the back of this classroom. They said, yeah, well, you can paint the whole wall. And they gave Ooh, us the paint. Them back and we then. just, and like, I have no art 
train. I have no yeah. idea. But we just painted this swirly kind of thing, so at least it right. wasn't boring anymore. Just and enjoying the process. But I think the creativity. what it began then was that in the school they started doing feature walls everywhere awesome. in the classrooms. Because awesome. One thing you need in a classroom too is to be inspired by something. Come on. Yeah. And then come up. You, need, you can't just look at a blank wall and go, okay, think of something. But if you have colour mm. and movement mm. and something there, it just gets those creative juices flowing. Yeah, it? It, really, it really does. My, um, And I, I can do it for just pure joy. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's no monetary, there's no business no. attached to it. Yeah. Although I have decided I am going to have an exhibition. And then oh. I'll tell you what's interesting. Seriously? The, yeah. Okay. What's interesting <laughs> is the difference in... I'm going to have an exhibition to what that does to me. Yeah. I'm like, isn't it funny when you put something that might have a monetary value attached yes. to it, the difference. So I can already feel that in my creativity. I'm like, isn't this interesting? Is it going to change the way you paint? I don't think so, and I hope not. That's <laughs> so I'm just like, but I remember, I do remember comedy. When you did it for free and you were just training, right, learning to the first gig, the difference in the pressure. Well, because it'd be like it's painting for money. Pressure. You think it's got to be good enough. Paint for somebody else it becomes about good instead enough. of about yourself. Yeah. So you start to shift yeah. the focus of I what know. you're doing. It's been really awesome to be watching this happening. Yes, I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah, I've gone from I can paint all day. It's fine. Oh, I love it. This is awesome mm. too. I might have an exhibition, <gasps> which means someone might buy it. Totally, I can feel that. Yeah. That's pressure. I can feel the, yep, the internal and pressure coming there a in. Date? Am I good enough? That No, I've just, it I've just decided I committed with my sister when she was up. So, oh, it'll probably be, I think I need to nut it out, probably three months. Oh, well, okay, that's Two not months. far away. No, because I've got, well, I've got quite a few to finish. Um, and then from there, I'm going into um, running creativity courses. Yeah. I, for my own sake, I need to expand and move away from just the humour. I've got to be, I think that's sure. what I've realised over the... Mm. Um, the last month really it's like oh it's time for my own expansion now yeah do you think we'll get back to a place where you know um we can have a good laugh at ourselves that we will get our sense of humor back do you think that starting that we're we've you know moved through the worst of it and now we're coming out the other side do you, do you think or are we still treading on eggshells a bit i know we just have been we've been given permission to hate people i think in the last two years and you know and project. Does it, yeah and it doesn't cool. matter what opinion people have you know people feel like they have permission to just mm. you know attack people whereas you know humor starts to bring the balance back into our world and into our life and do you think that's something that is going to happen do you find that there will be a shift in that i think we'll slowly sort of come back to it this woke business needs to settle mm. um because whilst we're heading down that avenue and <laughs> I mean, that to me is just all about killing humour, just like, let's remove it. Are you allowed to joke about that? Well, I hope so. I'm going to. Um, someone, actually <laughs> called, someone actually called me woke the other day. It made me oh. laugh. No, I laughed. I was like, what am I offended? I'm like, how offensive. Yeah. I'm, you're calling me woke. And wow. I'm like, I, I, I'm not woke. That's what I mean. I don't think I have anyone... wisdom, but I'm not woke. I don't think anyone really sort of I'm understands what they're no saying. No one even knows what it means. It's just no. a whole... We've put labels on everything. Oh, yeah. And everyone's, you know, it's been, you know, the pandemic's just been two years. Project, project, project. Yes. So yeah. I, I really hope so. I hope people need to kind of go, hang on, things have got very heavy on earth. Mm. We need to lighten this up. And, mm. But it, like I said, it's an active thing. And mm. if if people are running around, I'm easily offended, I'm easily offended. That's offensive, that's offensive, yeah. that's offensive. Just You can't say that, you can't say that. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah, I'm over it. That I mean, won't stop for a bit. It's it's this always like a, you know, this is not offensive and this is deeply offensive measure that have. But mm. um, all comics understand they have a conscience. Mm. They operate it pretty well. Mm. Um, their intention is not to cause harm. Mm. I well, think everyone should leave us alone and just have a look at you, yourselves that you're all getting upset. Yeah, able to have a laugh at yourself. I mean, the pandemic you really hit, like it hit the arts and arts industry oh, really hard brutal. um you know is there a comedian that you love i mean person i love ricky gervais he's one I'm, of my I, favorites I really and like i love ricky. it because he just doesn't give a shit and he'll still say what he does mm. and he 
you know, obviously he cops some flack for it. Yeah, but I, I think like more, the balance is more the other way for him. I think people just go, no, good on you. Yeah, say it like mm. it is kind of thing. So is there and an artist people. that you love more than... Yeah, yeah I, I would put him there these days and, you know, a couple of others that have been a bit vocal over the last couple of years that yeah. <laughs> also lost their careers because of that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. it's, it's changed a lot, but I, I yeah, I do like Ricky. Mm. Because I know so many and so many comics, it actually comes down to liking bits of their material. Yes. So I know, you know, so many of their routines that I'm like, oh, I really love that bit and that bit. Over liking sort of them all together. But yeah, yeah. be right up there with mine. Because the same is like, I don't care. Yeah. And I think that's, mm. I think we need to have more of that. Yeah, I think pe kind of people attitude. really need to... <laughs> Like, out of all the things, this is what amazes me, of all the things to be upset about in the world, someone trying to make a joke in humour yeah. is probably the last one yeah. that should be attacked in my personal opinion. Absolutely. Obviously, I'm very attached to it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, we've got starving people, we've got domestic violence, so we've got many so many things for you to be offended and upset about. Mm. Go to those. The focus tends to go to the wrong place, Why doesn't it? Why are you pointing and... Mm. Yeah, mm. We're, we're trying our best here. We're just trying to, yeah. trying to make the laugh. Absolutely. And uh, Jim Jeffries has a good a bit on it. And I'm, I'm not a fan of his, right? I like bits of his material. Um, but, you know, he wouldn't be my favourite. I think he's an awesome comic. Mm. Um, some people would despise him, but he had a bit about guns. The gun okay. laws in America that is deem it incredibly clever. Like, it's amazing. Some of his other stuff, not for me. Yeah. Um, at all. But he does have a good bit that we, we're trying our best to make us laugh. Yeah. Like, we're not trying to offend you. Yeah. We yeah. just haven't got it right yet. Give us, give us a break. We're really working quite hard. I think we need to start a new hashtag, bringing humour back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Everybody actually, that's needs a little good. bit of hashtag. Like bringing sexy back, bringing humour yeah, bring back. Humor back. So I think right. it's really important. And I know from a health right. perspective and what I do that, you know, if you can get people to laugh and just um, let go of the seriousness yeah. of life for a, a little while and just let yourself be in a state of pure joy and entertainment and let, you know, have a laugh at the world, have yeah. a laugh at yourself and just go, look at this place we're in. This is funny as hell. Like, We've got to be a, whoever a, thought we'd be in, in the world the way it is now. It's just so we do need to find humour in that in every we day. We do. I think it was yeah. Gandhi that said Gandhi, Gandhi. Mm. Um, if he didn't have a sense of humour, he would have committed suicide a long yeah. time ago. That's a, that's a big statement. Yeah. But a lot of people of that very high leader will say the same. It's how they survive. Absolutely. Like, how am I going to keep going this? These people. Are... Yeah. There's a yin and a yang. There's a light and a dark, and we need to bring more of the light and the humour back. So, we do. We need a real priority yeah. on it because we, we've so, done a heavy couple of years. I'm going to put a... <laughs> we have. I've had enough now. We're I'm over it. I'm over it. Laugh it up, people. That's Laugh right. it up. Tell me a joke. Appropriately. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a link below to yeah. your website and if anyone wants to get in touch with you, with yeah. Fiona McGarry, you come can. Tonight. You can have a look at, you know, the workshops that you're doing and yes. come and... Um, Embrace okay. your inner child and, and gain some confidence and maybe look at the world a different way. Please give yourself permission to laugh. Yeah. Don't let anyone tell you what you can and can't laugh at. Yeah. That is up to you and your conscience and your heart will be your guide. Yeah. What yeah. a beautiful thing to say and probably the perfect ending for our little chat. Thank I you so, so much. You're very, very welcome. I really appreciate it and I really hope that everybody got something out of it because I think, mm. you know, it was just a really appropriate time to sit down and talk about bringing yep. humour back into our lives and not taking ourselves too seriously anymore. And it's free. People have access to yes. humour and laughter. Free, literally. It's free. It's free nights everywhere. So go out and book yourself a comedy show. Do go yourself out. a favour. Get your friends and family around. Yeah, Get go together. on. Have go, some come and see Fiona. Come see me. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Fiona. Bye. <laughs>